Hi, I'm Miki Kim. I'm very happy to be here at Fat, Fat Quarter Shop to show you how to make this quilted shopper bag. I like this bag of so much is because uh, it's very roomy. You can hold anything, and it's quilted. So if you can wrinkle it, it still it's go back to where it should be. And then also you can use uh, the inside out. So it is one bag with the two styles. I want to show you. So make sure you use your favorite pad fabric for the exterior and lining also because you're gonna use it both way and I added the double cap ribbet for the structure so it can hold the heavy things like your shopping purchases so let's get started you can find my pattern and the fabric at fat quarter shop on the links down below First, we're gonna start the exterior. You need to sew two pieces of uh, fabric together and then press the seam open. And, you, and then next you need uh, foam bedding. I use uh, Bayani's Soft and Stable. And then it's a little slightly bigger than your exterior fabric. That helps you quilting. Now we're going to spray baste or clip it if you want. I'm going to show you the both way. So what I do is uh, spray hot and press the fabric gently on the foam bedding. Like this. And take the other side of the bedding. In the same way, spray a little and place your lining fabric on top. And lining is a little slightly bigger than your foam bedding. So this is going to be like this and then if you don't have a, if you don't have the spray paste around your home then use the clip that's what I use mostly So I'm showing the both way clipping or spray baste. You can choose whatever you want to. And then first you need to quilt. We, now we're gonna quilt the exterior. You can do whatever you want. But I personally like the crisscross stitches. So first I'm gonna draw the first guided line on the center using a fabric marker that's th that goes away. I'm using friction pen. Friction pen, it disappears after you iron it. You can use your other marker, whatever you have around. Uh, it's not showing me. Now, I'm gonna quilt. I set the seam guide bar at 1 inch and I change the stitch length at 3. I use the 2311 because this uh, bag has a uh, light color and dark color combined. So I choose the because the this uh, white part is uh, more portion so I use the white color. So I'm going to start quilting. Be 
before when I uh, when I quilt crisscross lines, I did uh, first the di diagonal line, but now I changed. I do this way first and then the other way because uh, when I saw the guide center line first, it gets a little uh, wrinkly when I move on. So this is uh, the way I found. So I'm gonna start sewing this direction first. how I quilted the, the panel. When you make the other one for the other side of a bag, my tip is to take this uh, panel on top of your finished one and then draw the guideline so it matches the same angle. I'm gonna iron to erase the guide mark we did at the beginning. You just, just lightly iron it then the friction mark goes away. Then I see it here. Get here. It's gone now. Now you need to trim the panel as the size at the pattern in the pattern. So you have a two panel for the back. Now you need to make a bottom piece. Following the same direction as I did, it's just uh, the same with one print fabric and then it's a rectangular. Oh. Now, okay. Okay. now I'm going to show how to assemble. Take this bottom panel on top of your exterior panel, one of the exterior panel matching the bottom line edges and then pin and clip in place. And then you can sew before you add the binding, but I normally add the binding and then sew everything at once. So you take a binding strip and then repin. When you repin it, you take more clips so it doesn't move. And I learned this tip from Kimberly at Fat Quarter Shop video. She used a lot of uh, pins. So at this point, uh, I like to use uh, many clips. So we are ready to sew. You see the binding still slightly moves, but it's okay. And make 
make sure to cut the stitch at the end and then you sew the first panel and then now we're gonna fold this binding over to the lining and then top stitch we finished the sewing two pieces together. I want to iron because it is easier to finish the binding. Now I like how the binding covers the, my first sew line and then I'm gonna clip and then I am going to top stitch. So why I don't iron the binding in the beginning is before I used to bind, I before I iron the binding like this as many people does and then attach the binding but what I found is my seam thickness is always different it depends on the project you are doing so I wanted to adjust by changing the width of the fold so I can make the perfect binding so let's get I'm gonna keep clipping and then I'm going to top stitching the binding and as you said as I said this is the gonna be inside and out as this is gonna be the reversible back try the best to make the finish binding is pretty so if you prefer you can hand stitch the binding but I want to show you how I top stitch it Use the first sew line as a guide, cover the binding slightly, and try to top stitch the sew line. And I like to check if I'm doing right, so. Now we finished the top stitching and I kind of like very much. Now we finished assembling the all three panels. It looks like this. Now I'm gonna show you how I finish the side. Fold 
with the right side face, fold in half, and then you will see the bottom panel is folded in half like this, and then clip in place. Or oh, before that, let's uh, trim it, trim the left upper bindings. So fold in half of the bottom and then clip and then clip and as you see there is two different prints sewed together you want to match them up so you match this first and then clip the other side we have to repin when we add the binding, so just to roughly pin it. You don't need to be pinned securely. Okay, and then take another binding strips with the right face, right side facing each other. You need a little room about on the bottom because we need to wrap the binding end of the right edges to cover. So I will show you how. We pin the binding and then make sure it matches the inside. It's kind of a bulky, so I recommend to use a, a 90 needle if you have one. And then I use the walking foot, it helps uh, sewing. But let's get sewing. Now I want to iron the binding to make it easy to top stitching and everything. Before that I want to trim it. Then this is a little trick. As we, go we are going to use the inside of a panel as an exterior when we reverse the back so we try to make it pretty the possible so I want to wrap the raw edge like this and then fold so you can completely hide the raw edge of the bindings and then fold again And then it will be like this. Here's the my tip to completely hide the right edge of the binding. You fold over and then fold again and then you're gonna sew. We're gonna top, sti top stitch it like this. That way we don't see anything under so we're gonna pin here this is the starting and then we're gonna press the the rest of the bindings you can finger press it and then iron so 
so again this is the why I don't press the binding before I add the binding first and then press depends on the thickness your project has so I'm gonna wrap the seam like this and then clip it and you have uh, your favorite movie it's better take it and then hand stitch it otherwise you can top stitch it okay, I wanna keep a nice press here So let's. Uh, it's uh, now it's ready to top stitching. Again, if you have a wonder tape, you can apply here. So it's easy to sew. But I usually don't have it, so I'm gonna sew like this. Make sure to lock the stitching from the beginning and the ending. And then cover, you look at the sew line here and then cover with the binding. I try to sew very close to the edge. And again, take your time. I've sewn back so many times, so if you are the first uh, bang maker, it won't take that fast. It it will it may, it might take long, but once you know the basic assembly, it will be easier the next. And it gets bulky here because it has one, two, three, four layers. So it might take more binding width. So it is a little tricky. And I want to trim up the excess to reduce the bulkiness. again while sewing the binding moves a little so it's uh, okay I wanna show I wanna We finished one side, now we're gonna finish the other side with the same technique. Now we've almost finished the bag. It's time to add the top, top binding and add the handle, then you're done. Okay, take the binding strip, fold in half and give a nice uh, press. And then let's just start to, oh. Before add the binding, we need to turn the right side out because we're gonna sew the binding from the outside.
Okay. Okay, from here, either way, it's, it's the same front and back. It's hard to tell which is which. So it's okay, start anywhere. My tip is start your binding where the handle gonna be attached. That way you can hide the end. Now we finished adding the top binding. Let's add the handle. Before I add the handle, I wanna show you how to make. First, you cut the fab handle fabric, the size and the pattern. And then you have the poly strapping. If you don't have one around, you can use your cotton wrapping. Or you can use the multiple layers of uh, scrap fabrics. Okay, first you need to press in half of the handle fabric. I will show you how I did. Press in half first, like this, and then you need to measure where it goes, and then press both the raw edges inside so it doesn't show. It really looks like this, but as the finish the handle will looks like this. So we want to show the the side of the edge too so we're gonna press inside it like this and then both same way and then place your poly strapping aligning the center line that we already pressed the, in the beginning And then wrap it like this and then pin it. Before that I wanna put these inside and then pin clip. You can use the colorful cotton webbing so that way you don't need to make a handle but it is always nice uh, to choose your fabric that goes with your bag so if you have time and then material I recommend to you to make your fabric fabric handles or sometimes I recycle the handles from my old bag I save it and then I attach it to my new bags. That's another tip. So I will sew the handles. First, all the way around. And then sew again with uh, about a uh, quarter inch. You have uh, marked one inch from the, the handle end. And then three inch from the side. I would like to match this uh, one inch mark right under the binding. So it will be looks like this. And then clip it. So inside it will be like this. So this will be one inch inside. And then with the same manner, we do the other side of a handle like this and then when attach the handle looks like this okay you can adjust the handle where you want it okay so let's just sew the handles right under the binding now I attach the handles I top stitched right under the binding uh, at least uh, twice for the strength. It is just it is uh, strong, but it's uh, not strong enough to be handled to hold the uh, heavy things. To attach the double cap rivet, 
mark where you want to attach the rivet I just kind of eyeball it around here like this Using a stiletto, make a hole through the layers like this, but it's not, it must not big enough to get through this uh, tool inside. So get the small scissor. This is uh, what I do when I don't have a small punchy. So make a hole and then using a scissor make the hole a little bit bigger but you don't want to push it too hard so it, the, the hole should not be bigger than this uh, the eyelet double this uh, rivet you have okay so I try to make a just enough hole not too big I got it through. Then you take the other one. You push hard with the hand like this. And then there's a tool you can get from the craft store or Joanne. This is uh, for the double cap rebed attachment. Place this part of the rivet tool right under and then using uh, the other one that comes with uh, and match the hole so it goes here like this and then using a little hammer you have just uh, this and then it's done don't you like it and then you repeat it one two one two three more so each handle has two rivets so when you're done it will look like this inside yeah. will looks like this now we finish the attaching the double cap rivets let's iron it the bottom so what i do is uh, make a fold uh, like this with a little bit of a steam that it gives you a nice shape sometime I clip the size and then let it overnight that way it keeps the shape now we finished the quilted shopper bag thank you for watching please follow Pet Quarter Shop for more, for more tutorials and you can follow me at Instagram at Geriano and my website winkykim.com. Thank you for watching and hi, I hope to see you again.